Well, morning everyone. Welcome to the Health and Care Analytics um, Conference. Uh, I'm Fraser Batty. I work for the uh, Strategy Unit and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today and uh, also to chair the first session. Um, I want to start by opening the conference really on a celebratory uh, note. I think there's a lot to celebrate. The first thing to celebrate is that you're all here today. Um, we're all here today in the room. And, you know, celebrating the fact of being alive, and that's wonderful, but also celebrating the fact that you got a ticket. <laughs> because the demand for the conference, we weren't sure. We thought it was going to be needed. We thought it was going to be demanded. But we were just very happily overwhelmed by the uh, amount of people wanting to come. So welcome. Well done getting a ticket. Congratulations. Um, and also we're streaming, uh, we're streaming the sessions as well, so welcome uh, if you're watching online. Um, I also think it's worth celebrating the program we've put together. The team uh, has put together just a brilliant program, really varied, inputs from healthcare, social care, public health, all sorts of different perspectives, um, but all of them united around celebrating the value, shining the light upon the value that analysts bring and that analysis can, can bring. So I, I just think that's wonderful. And then I think it's also worth celebrating the fact that the public sector has basically done this for itself. Um, we've done this without commercial sponsorship, so um, you don't have to barge past IT suppliers in, uh, in the corridor. Um, and we can just concentrate on the substance of what we're doing, and I think that's wonderful and that's worth celebrating too. Um, I don't just get to celebrate though, you get notices um, from me. So um, the usual one, the fire exits. There's, there's no fire alarm scheduled in the event. It goes off, assume it's for real. Um, we'll exit that way and then follow the, <laughs> follow the signs. Um, I've also been told to say that the rooms are not locked in between sessions. So that's a recommendation to you that you keep your valuables uh, on you at all times. Chris, you've got several thousand pounds worth of kit in your hand. Keep that with you at all times. Um, we also, we <laughs> it's a rough neighborhood. We live 10 minutes down the road, so um, not, not together. I'm, not, I'm also not outing as a... <laughs> Um, we're neighbours, we're neighbours. Um, anyway, so keep your valuables with you at all times. Um, speaking of valuables, we've got hacker mugs. Has anyone got a hacker mug? Can I wave a mug around? Okay, you just have to believe that they exist. Um, we're going to be giving hacker mugs to the best talk in each of the parallel sessions. Um, the exact judging criteria, I'm afraid, are opaque. We're just going to award, there's a shadowy committee, we'll just award them. Um, and we're going to publicize the fact that you've won them in our post-conference communications. And we're already starting to plan the conference for next year. We're going bigger, we're going better, we're going fuller. And we'll invite the winners of the mugs to come back and you know, drink from them and say that they were there when it all began. Um, OK, that's it, really, from me. I'm, I also get the, the, the sort of like poison chalice of chairing session one. Listen to the name of people that I've got to chair and organize here. So um, the first person whose timing I have to control is Professor Dame Sue Hill, who's the Chief Scientific Officer for England. Um, uh, also Ming Tang, the Chief Data and Analytics Officer at NHS England, who most of you will know. Uh, ben Goldacre, who you can all imagine the joy I'm feeling at controlling his timing. Um, <laughs> doctor, academic, writer, author of the Goldacre Review, which arguably went on. A uh, little bit, and also I get to get, <laughs> <laughs> which we all, uh, we all loved, we all loved, we all loved. Um, and then the other person whose timing I get to control, I get to call boss. So Peter, director of the stress unit, um, I get to tell him he's talked for enough. So that's going to be uh, interesting. So, but Peter, you're uh, you're on first. I have things I'm going to wave at you according to how well your timing goes. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Um, welcome. I'm going to repeat a few of the things that Fraser said, but welcome to the first ever UK-wide health and care analytics conference, Hacker 23. Within a week of the NHS's 75th first birthday, we're having the first ever conference for NHS analysts. It's worth thinking about, isn't it? Why that is. It's absolutely fantastic to see you all here. Early start, some of you have traveled great distances, I know, to be here. You are the pioneers. As, as, uh, as Fraser said, there's gonna be Hacker 24, there's gonna be Hacker 25. This is, a, this is now a brand. This is a mission. Uh, and you were at the first one. 
you took the trouble to register, you've taken the trouble to be here, and by your effort to do that, you've, you've made it real. So, uh, so that's incredibly important. You'll be able to tell future generations you're at the first one. But anyway, I just want to check, who's here from Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> who's, who's here from um, England, south of Watford? From the east? Yes. From the Midlands? Yeah. From up north? Yeah. Oh, well. Has anyone... Oh, okay, great, we managed to ask it. Right, excellent. Well, look at that. That's, so this is a UK-wide conference. What a fantastic opportunity to make new relationships, new links. Brilliant. Right, so I'm Peter Spilsbury. I'm, um, uh, as Fraser said, I'm director of this thing called the Strategy Unit. We're an NHS team. Um, I've been in the NHS 41 years and counting. Um, the reason why I mention that is because when I began, the NHS hadn't invented management. Uh, I, I joined as a national administrative trainee. They then brought in the boss of Marks and Spencers, who said he thought it'd be a good idea if uh, we introduced management, so we all became managers overnight. But when I started, the way we used to share data was we sent it in the post. So when I first started working with the renal units in the Midlands, we probably still do that now, I mean, when, when I first started working with the renal units in the Midlands to try and develop a dynamic model for the, how the dialysis pool worked, um, we wrote to them asking for information, sent them a piece of paper with a template on it, they filled it in, sent it back, and that's what we used to do the maths. So we've come on a bit, haven't we? A little bit. So, um, the strategy unit, we're an NHS team, we, uh, we do commissioned analytical evaluation and strategy projects, we advocate for the application of high quality analysis and for it to be open and for it to be shared. It's, it's an absolute um, core belief for us that the NHS should only pay once, which is a fundamental reversal of the consultancy model of course, but that's why we do what we do differently. And increasingly, we do lots of training and we do lots of development work in the territory of analytics and decision making. Um, and if anyone's interested, we're, we're working with the ICSs in the Midlands on this thing called the Midlands Decision Support Network. And there's a stand outside with, um, where you can talk to Claire, who, who manages that network, about some of the things we're trying to get going in the Midlands. And we're incredibly proud as a team, that we were asked to coordinate HACLA to make it real. It's been, it's been a fantastic thing for us to do this. We're very proud that we also do the same for the NHSR community. Um, and I really do need to single out one person, Chris, because he does both of those. Um, and what distinguishes, I think, the way we've approached this is that both HACLA and NHSR have been conceived of, designed, and organized by jobbing analysts. Chris is the head of data science for the strategy unit. When he joined us, he didn't know he was going to be organizing the first ever UK-wide. <laughs> but he's enjoyed it. He was telling me last <laughs> night. <laughs> uh, but anyway, right. <laughs> Some stats. So we, 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 didn't, we didn't know how this was going to go. We had, a, we had an inkling. So we said we were going to do it. We've got over a thousand people who've registered for this conference. Nearly, uh, we sold out at the beginning of May for the in-person. Um, the online, uh, in fact, Chris mentioned, people are still joining at this minute and we've actually just had to take steps to expand the Zoom license because so many people are, are joining online, which is fantastic. We thought we'd ask for abstracts. We, we actually had discussions in the team about what would happen if we got less than 10. How, how, could, we, how could we sort of um, stimulate it? We got 170. The people that, who organise conferences at the university, their kind of jaws are bouncing on the table. 170 abstracts. So much 
So many offers to participate and contribute that we've had to break the conference into five streams over two days. Um, the other thing is that we decided that we really needed to bite the bullet and we do it quickly. So, so despite the fact they hadn't organised anything like this before, this conference has gone from zero to, to being on today in six months, which is, which is a pretty fab experience. So it's huge. It might prove to be a bit messy because we've tried to squeeze a lot in. Um, but as I say, it's by analysts, for analysts, and it's been conceived of in a way that hopefully will, will be really stimulating for you in the room who are, and online who are analysts. We hope it'll be great, but obviously you'll, you'll be the judges of that. So I need to thank a few people. So there was a, this original idea that something national to support the development of analysts was needed. And we'd put it in a couple of reports we'd written for NHS England, but we, we were struggling to kind of work out what, how we could take it forward. Professor Goldacre, Ben, wrote a report and really helpfully put in it a recommendation that there should be a national conference. And at the point Ben's report was getting a lot of attention, I just decided to, to take a punt. And I asked the chief executives of the four CSUs whether they would put some money in to make Ben's recommendation real. And they did. They had the courage and the imagination to put in the money, pretty much all the funds we needed to fund Hacker for the first three years, which was a, a, a massive thanks to them for having the um, initiative to do that. NHSE saw the value in backing the initiative and giving it its head. And then the Health Foundation, um, also massive thanks to them, came in and, and provided some additional resources so we could, we could spread the conference across the four nations. And we've got bigger ambitions for TACA 24. We know the dates, so um, before you leave, make sure you know the dates too. Start getting it in your diary. But critically, how today, what, what the success or otherwise of this conference in some ways depends on what you make of it. So my plea to you is get stuck in, borrow with pride, find things that people are presenting that you can use, you can take elsewhere, support your colleagues. 90% of the material in this conference is your colleagues presenting work they've done. For some of them, it might be one of the first times they've done that to this scale of audience. So be in there, support them, encourage them. Give us feedback. Seriously, if I gave you one duty, it would be to give your feedback at the end of this conference because we can use that feedback to make the case for, for the next one and the one after that and the one after that. Um, and shout about the experience. And finally, I just want to offer you three principles. Have I got my... Three principles that we in the strategy unit think are fundamental if you're going to advance analytics in, to improve the management of health and care services. And we, we say these wherever we go, and I, I understand that's quite an important thing to do, so I'm going to say them here today. And, and I ask you to have these in mind as you engage in the conference. The first principle is the primary purpose of doing analysis is to enable high-quality decisions. That's what we do it for. The second principle is if we're going to advance in, in being analytically led, as all the policy documents at the moment are saying we want to do, we've got to address the demand side for analysis as well as the supply side. What do I mean by that? You can read that, can't you? Do I need to read? But anyway, I'll say it again. The best data and analysis in the world is useless if it's addressing the wrong question. The best data and analysis in the world, if it's addressing the right question, won't achieve very much if the decision-making processes aren't designed to embrace it. If we want to be increasingly analytically led in how we make decisions about improving health and care services, we need the leadership to engage in problem formulation and we need serious attention given to the decision-making processes 
that embrace and answer. And then the third principle, and this, this is possibly controversial, but we believe it profoundly, is in organizing services to respond to this challenge, it is essential to distinguish between these three things. Data management, reporting and BI, and analytics. They're connected, but they're different. They require different skills, they require different working environments. If we lump them together, there's only one casualty, and that's analysis. It gets crowded out. So our plea to anyone thinking about how to organize intelligence functions in ICSs or whatever it is you're doing, remember that distinction and include it in how you organize yourself. 